you can't talk about the greatest UFC legends of all time without mentioning the name Matt Hughes. Hughes laid down the path for fighters like Tyron Woodley, Kamar Usman, and Leon Edwards to find their fittings in the UFC welterweight division. His achievements in combat sports are so applaudable, it will take a fighter with supernatural powers to amass a better record. But as good as Matt Hughes was, his life had one of the most tragic drifts that no one saw coming. A drift that made this once great fighter a weaker version of himself. So that begs the real question, what happened to Matt Hughes? And to find the answer to that question, then all you need to do is sit back, relax, and get comfortable as we take you on an unimaginable journey through the tragic story of Matt Hughes that you've probably never heard of. But make sure you stick to the end where we reveal the extraordinary way Matt Hughes once again turned his story around. Now, without further ado, let's begin. Matt Hughes was born on October 13th, 1973 in Hillsboro, Illinois. And just like most great fighters in the UFC today, Matt Hughes started molding his tremendous career right from high school. You can push all the weight you want in a weight room and stuff like that, but he's just got a strength about him that's, it, it, I don't know, it, it's different. It, if you put 300 pounds on a bar and uh, you, know, you send him in there to, to lift it, he, he might be able to lift it, but if you put him up against a 300 pound man, he'd throw him around like a rag doll. But after being so dominant in his high school wrestling team, Matt Hughes made a smooth transition into Lincoln College in Lincoln, Illinois, where he made history for the very first time. And at Lincoln, Coach Clem, I mean, he was really concerned. He wanted everybody to graduate, so he made sure we went to class, um, and uh, everybody knew each other as well, you know, and everybody lived basically on campus, so you knew everybody, and, and it was a lot, a lot better environment. He had two or three different things that he did really well that were very successful for him coming out of high school and his first year of college before he got here. Um, he, he, really, uh, he really developed himself quite a bit. He learned a lot, both from what we did in practice and what he learned out in the competition. Being so good at wrestling made Matt seek a career as a pro MMA fighter. He had the skill, the technicality, and the aggression. He had his first fight on January 1st, 1998 against a not so famous opponent, Eric Snyder. He eventually won the fight via a slam knockout in the first 15 seconds of the fight. But nine fights later, Matt Hughes found himself under the best MMA promotion in the world, the UFC. Well, my first UFC fight, UFC 22 down in uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana. Um, still didn't know what to think of the sport, where I was gonna be at, what was going on, why was I even there? Um, I think I was nervous, but I don't think I showed it. I'm nervous every fight, but I try not to show it. Um, but I, I beat the guy up pretty bad. Val Top was the guy's name. And um, I just took it one fight at a time, you know, so I didn't, I wasn't thinking, hey, this is going to lead me to a, a world title shot or anything like that. I just, I just, I just love to compete. Two or three wins in a row, I can't even remember right now off the top of my head, in the UFC. And then I lost to Dennis Hallman in, in uh, UFC Japan. And then they ended up cutting me. Um, they said they did it on accident, but I, who knows if they did or not. And uh, then I had another loss right after that against Pele, Pele Landy, Jose Pele Landy, guy from Brazil. So uh, I, I fought a lot in the United States, uh, smaller shows, and then I fought a, a guy named Kanahari in Japan. And I don't remember what month it was, but I fought Kanahari. But he was a big guy. He was like 220 or something. And um, I, I beat him major decision over in Japan. And uh, that win got me back in the UFC. So um, right after that, uh, I Pat had right after that fight, Pat lost his title to Carlos Newton, and they wouldn't let Pat rematch Carlos for for the title shot. So Pat got to pick the opponent. So he, Pat picked me to go in and fight Carlos. Facing Carlos Newton at UFC 34, Matt Hughes managed to reverse the fight in the second round to get his signature trademark slam and win the UFC welterweight title for the first time. This win marked the beginning of a tremendous career for Matt Hughes, fighting against some of the greatest men of that era, men like Frank Trigg, George St. Pierre, BJ Penn, and Matt Serra. But after winning the UFC welterweight title twice with seven collective title defenses, Matt Hughes retired from MMA and got hit with one of the most tragic accidents ever. I was helping a farmer and I was taking diesel to a tractor and filling the tractors in the back, he struck a diesel and death 
was a diesel mixture, but I was in the country going across a rail track, and at the time the corn was up, so I couldn't see the rail track well, and there's no cross home or lights, it's just a, a yield sign, and so, so it was a bad angle, and I, I had a video on the truck, and in, in my truck, the other seat, and block up between the front and the back door is in the way, so you can't see the track at all. Terrible angle, but that's why I didn't see the, the train. It was no crossings, no lights, and just a bad crossing, but I was just going to fill his tractor and I can't hit. I, I remember nothing about the day. This is all from people that were with me. I just don't remember anything. Like you just heard, Matt Hughes' truck was hit by a train, lending to some life-threatening injuries. As a matter of fact, it was by a miracle that he survived. A brain injury from the train hitting me so hard, it really tripped me up and gave me a brain shear, which is tearing the axle away from the brain after the train wreck. The train hit me so hard, I was in a coma for 19 days, and they said with my brain injury, I should have blood and some syndrome, which is why I'm just in a bed or a chair watching TV and I'm locked in my own body, but I'm, I can't speak, I don't speak or do anything, I just keep to myself. That's what the experts said I should do. You know, they said you shouldn't even be able to talk, that you shouldn't be able to move. Was that hard to go through for you? was to have that sort of taken away from you by that train. It's tough. Can I say whatever you want? Cut out whatever you want, but I've got some good friends and I'll admit I've thought about so sad, but if I commit so sad that I so many people watch me, they might think it's good to do the same thing. So I, I can't do that. Kind of sucks. I can't even kill myself because other people would do the same thing. Matt Hughes was in a tragic battle trying to get himself back together. This was a different type of fight than he ever had in the octagon. He was now fighting to become himself again. He went through a series of treatments, but gradually, step by step, Matt Hughes was able to get himself back. And maybe he wasn't as agile as before, but at least he had himself in one piece. Now, um, we had this accident and what's life like now, picking up the pieces? Like you say, you can't remember that day. Is this like the movie Momento? Like, do you never, you can't remember anything? You have a hard time with remembering stuff now or is it just that? Just that day, which I was told that that happens a lot with a brain injury. They don't remember that day, but I just wish I could know more about the day and the later. But who does see? Who doesn't see the biggest thing in Illinois? The biggest moment after is a train in Illinois, and just drives me crazy. Okay, pause. We've got a monthly shout out contest for our subscribers where we give you the chance to earn a free shout out in one of our videos. All you have to do is subscribe to our channel and comment I subbed in the comment section down below to enter this contest. Come on, hit that subscribe button and comment I sub now. Using stem cell therapy, the UFC Hall of Famer Matt Hughes started speaking and walking properly again. He even started hitting the gym too. And after what might have been the end for most, Matt Hughes fought his way back. He proved to himself, to his fans, and to the world of MMA that he can't be beaten. The fighting spirit instilled in him since childhood kept him alive and kept him moving forward even in his darkest moment. Although we won't see him fight again, this will definitely not be the last we'll see of him. He's inspired many to fight, to be better, and to persevere in the face of darkness. He dominated the welterweight division, he broke records, and he's definitely one of the greatest fighters of his era. With that, we say thank you, Matt Hughes, for your profound accomplishments in the UFC and mixed martial arts as a whole. Make sure you check this other video out shown on your screen. See you next time and bye for now.